We've been talking about the next generation of GPUs and obviously from the perspective of mining, which ones are going to be good, which ones are not. We have a problem with, of course, the RTX 4000 series as it pertains to power because they are increasing the power consumption pretty significantly. On top of that, they are moving to an ATX 3.0 standard and PCIe Gen 5 connectors, meaning your current power supply setup for your mining rigs is probably not going to be sufficient and that is due to the power spikes that are going to be happening on the RTX 4000 series. The, the power spikes already as reported by Gamers Nexus on the RTX 3000 series are pretty significant so it's safe to assume it's going to be even worse on the RTX 4000 series especially since they are needing a, a completely brand new power supply standard to support this. And that means from a mining infrastructure standpoint, upgrade to power supplies and an additional cost. Plus, to make the matters even worse uh, from that point of view, we also have basically no real significant improvements in memory speed coming from the RTX 40, 40 series. Essentially, what you're going to be seeing is the RTX 3090 Ti uh, mining performance at the top end. So you're looking at that 125 to 135 megahash a second, depending on what, how well you can cool, of course, the cards, because they are going to be taking a lot more power, which means more heat, which means uh, more of a chance of thermal throttling. It's pretty disappointing, to be uh, frank, at least from my perspective. So I'm not really keen on the 40 series for mining. I think that it's not going to be that great. The reason for this though, just to give you guys an idea, there's a shift in the GPU market and the focus on how they're handling workloads and it primarily surrounds the cache. And this came about in the RX 6000 series from Radeon when they started putting in Infinity Cache and they started loading in tons of cache onto, of course, the GPUs. What this allowed them to do is have basically lower performing memory like the GDDR6 and still compete on traditional rasterization uh, tasks, etc. with NVIDIA on their GDDR6X memory. Now, NVIDIA is copying this on their latest generation 40 series and bumping up their L2 cache all the way up to like 96 megabytes. So and that's kind of where the shift in the industry is going. As far as that pertains to mining, will there be algorithms or miners that are developed to leverage, you know, the cache and improve mining performance? Maybe. I'm not really positive that that will happen though anytime soon. So we were kind of looking at the RX 7000 series GPUs for the next gen releases for miners because the power consumption looked good and finally AMD was going to provide us with a 384 bit bus at the top end. On the 6000 series, the 6900 XT and the 6950 XT only provided us with a 256 bit bus, which really hampered its mining performance at the top end. This meant that essentially down below pretty much anything or anything above a RX 6800 from a memory intensive algorithm perspective, didn't see any improvements. You could buy a 6800, a 6800 XT or the 6900 XT, and they all pretty much did around that 63 mega hash a second. And that was due to the fact that the top end models did not have bigger memory buses. Now we are getting that bigger memory bus and it looked like we were going to stay on, you know, a pretty decent power level. The rumors now are that we are going to have higher power consumption to performance. I don't know yet. We'll kind of take a look at this article and see. I'm hoping that at least the rumors are true and remain true that they're going to remain on a previous standard because Obviously, with the infrastructure that we have in place, I would rather not be upgrading a bunch of power supplies or power supply components. So let's get into this. This is coming from WCCF Tech. In an interview with Tom's Hardware, AMD's senior vice president, Sam, has hinted that the next-gen RDNA 3 GPUs powering the RX 7000 series graphics cards will feature higher power consumption than existing solutions while still delivering a 50% performance per watt gain. Now keep in mind this 50% performance per watt gain is going to be overall performance. That's not just going to be memory performance, right? That's going to be talking about their core performance and tradition like traditional workload performance. 
So let's continue though. Both AMD and Nvidia are expected to heavily focus on efficiency and GPU power designs for their next gen GPUs to deliver higher performance. We have seen various leaks for Nvidia's GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards, which are expected to rock up to 600 watt designs. Meanwhile, AMD is saying that while they announced a more than 50% performance watt uplift, which we reported on previously over the previous generation, that doesn't mean that power levels aren't going to go up for RDNA 3 RX 7000 series graphics cards. Quote, it's really the fundamentals of physics that are driving this, he explained. The demand for gaming and compute performance is, if anything, just accelerating. And at the same time, the underlying process technology is slowing down pretty dramatically and the improvement rate. So the power levels are just going to keep going up. Now we've got a multi-year roadmap of very significant efficiency improvements to offset that curve, but the trend is there. Performance is king, he stated, but even if our designs are more power efficient, that doesn't mean you don't push power levels up if the competition is doing the same thing. It's just that they have to push them a lot higher than we will. And this is significant because when we're talking about GPU performance and the competition between the red team and the green team, we've seen this previously played out, right? And typically how this is how it goes. If you have a company that is focused on power to performance, at a given time versus a company that's basically focused on increasing the power rates primarily, the company that has started to move towards power to performance is usually the one that ends up on top for the next kind of what I would call GPU king cycle, right? You go back between ATI and, and Nvidia and green team and red team back and forth. Now, for AMD, they've been behind for quite some time. And a lot of that catch up came from the new influx of revenue, of course, from the Ryzen series. So what we're going to see play out here is probably something similar to Ryzen versus the Intel CPUs. And we can tell that already because with the RX 6000 series, we were seeing better performance per watt to, of course, the green team. There are a few features and things like that, quality of life features on NVIDIA that do keep them ahead of the game, specifically pertaining around uh, things like DLSS and, of course, ray tracing, where they are a little bit ahead. Their tensor cores for AI, that sort of stuff, right? But AMD and traditional rasterization has caught up, and they are definitely winning in the power to performance range for that specific task set. So I think we will see AMD kind of catch up here. And it also helps, of course, that they are in the new consoles when we're talking about other software driven aspects of this. It would be a nice change of pace, in my humble opinion, because AMD has typically offered more tinkering and such with, of course, their GPUs. They are moving further and further away from that, where you could completely flash a BIOS on a 5000 series and adjust memory timings, etc. That's kind of been locked out on the 6000 series, and that's unfortunate, right? But at least you can still play with more power tool and the such to get tweaked in settings. You do have voltage control right off the bat without having to do any weird unlocking or anything. So, from that perspective, I do appreciate Radeon more, and we've seen kind of NVIDIA lock down and become a more closed system than anything else on the market, even including Intel at this point. So I would like the competition to show that a more open approach to these types of tasks and so on would be appreciated by the consumer. So that's kind of where I stand on the whole NVIDIA or basically GeForce versus Radeon aspect of things. If you remember a few months back, we had seen rumors that the RDNA 3 powered Radeon RX 7000 series offering TDPs of up to 400 watts. That's a 100 watt increase over the existing Navi 21 GPU that goes up to 335 watts. So if AMD is to achieve two times performance gain over its existing lineup, the TDP should end up close to 450 watts, which is the same as the one rumored for the GeForce RTX 4090 BF GPU. At the same time, the peak power and operational power may vary a lot, and Sam is pretty confident that when he says the competition will have to push the power higher, a lot higher than they will. 
And that is kind of where we're at with uh, basically the competition that's a brewing, right? Furthermore, next gen graphics cards with over 400 to 450 watt total board power will have to utilize a brand new PCIe Gen 5 connector considering the triple eight pin connectors can only go as far as 450 watts. And no company has made a design choice for their reference cards at least yet. So whether AMD is looking to go the triple eight pin route or end up with the new gen five connector will conform to uh, that will conform to the ATX 3.0 standard and deliver stable performance remains to be seen from the AMD camp. And that's kind of where things have gotten blown out of the water for the mining infrastructure perspective on the 7,000 series, because if the top end model, which is really the model we're curious about, right? Because it's lower power consumption, presumably, about 150 watts less uh, than the top model on the NVIDIA side, but it does give us a, a bigger bandwidth, 384 bit, than the previous gen RX 6000 series. If the upgrades are required to ATX 3.0 standard on AMD, then it all becomes a moot point because regardless of which one requires less power, your investment is going to have to go up regardless for upgrades on your power supply situation. Some key features of the RDNA 3 GPUs highlighted in AMD will include five nanometer process node, an advanced chiplet packaging, re-architected compute unit, optimized graphics pipeline, next gen AMD infinity cache, and plus greater than or equal to, well, greater than 50% performance per watt versus RDNA 2. The AMD RX 7000 series graphics cards based on the RDNA 3 GPU architecture are expected to launch later this year. So expect more information in the coming months. And as you can see, we kind of have all of this laid out. And like I was talking about, here it is. Here's that 384 bit bus. This one's really interesting. The Navi 3X, we don't know what this is, right? This has a weird <coughs> release or question mark here of 384 bit by two. I caught this and I was like, cool. <laughs> now this is all rumor and speculation, but if we got two 384 bit buses, this would be a mining king. This would absolutely destroy everything, right? Like we're talking about without infinity cash, probably somewhere around two terabytes a second of, uh, yeah, meg megabytes per second of bandwidth. But we're also talking about a, you know, a potential for just dual mining. A lot of crazy stuff could end up coming out of this. Now that's going to be the Radeon Pro series, probably going to be out of price points, but it would be really cool if we included Infinity Fabric in that, right? We're talking about 3.5, uh, yeah, 3.5 gigabits per second on the memory speed, uh, total memory speed. If you take into account currently what we're speculating on the 384 bit bus being at 1.7 terabytes of effective speed with infinity cache. So that would be absolute insanity. And uh, that was one thing I caught that I thought was really cool. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern time. You can check out more clips here or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.